Good day, dear viewers. My name is Luke Tessier, and this is A Form of Sound Words. We'll begin a new series this week. For the next few weeks, we'll be covering a number of biblical misconceptions, that is, ideas and concepts that the general public believes is biblical but in fact, are completely unbiblical. This week, we'll consider the idea of Satan as king or ruler of hell. We see this idea all over in popular culture. Heaven is blue skies and green pastures with God as king, while hell is barren rocks and flames where Satan is king. It's that last part that is particularly problematic and unbiblical. Satan most certainly isn't a ruler in hell. According to Scripture, there are only two places Satan ever enjoyed any degree of authority, and neither of them is hell. First, Satan once had some authority in heaven. Yes, heaven. In Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 to 15, the prophet Ezekiel laments over the king of Tyre. But it is clear that the prophecy goes beyond the earthly king and speaks of Satan himself. There we read, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Satan was originally created as a glorious, anointed or exalted, privileged, covering angel. What did he cover? Well, at the top of the mercy seat in the temple of God, there were fashioned two cherubim which covered the mercy seat with their wings. I think it's safe to assume that Satan once covered the very throne of God. He likely was the greatest of all the angels, we're told, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty, highly exalted, perfect in all his ways. That is, until iniquity was found in him. So prior to his fall, Satan enjoyed high authority in heaven. After his fall, his authority was greatly diminished. 
but still had some, as recorded in several passages of the Bible, like Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. There we read, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Note there that in his fallen state, Satan still has power to weaken the nations. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, Satan and his demonic followers are described like this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And in Satan's temptations of the Lord Jesus Christ, he makes the following statement in Luke chapter 4, verses 5 to 6. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. So, Satan had authority in heaven prior to his fall. And he currently has authority and power in this fallen world. But all that will come to an end at the judgment before the great white throne of God which we read of in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. There we read, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Hope you didn't miss the emphasis there. There's no ruling or any authority for Satan in the lake of fire. It's torment, day and night, forever and ever. This lines up perfectly with what the demons in the country of the Gergesenes said to the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 29. There we read, And behold, they, the demons, cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us, before the time. And we're given more information in the epistles of Peter and Jude on the current state of demons that, prior to Noah's flood, had taken the form of men and married natural women. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4 we read, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, 
and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And Jude chapter 1 and verse 6 says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So, we have chains, darkness, and fiery torment. No one is ruling in hell. Satan shouldn't be regarded as the current or future warden of the great eternal spiritual prison that is hell. He won't be the warden. He'll be the primary inmate. Now, where did this idea of hell being the home base of Satan and his demons even come from? Well, mostly, it came from the influence of Roman Catholicism on art, both visual and written. Dante's Inferno, which is the first part of the poem Divine Comedy, written in the 14th century, described hell as nine concentric circles of torment going deeper and deeper into the earth. The fictional depictions Dante wrote about made its way into the visual arts, and all of a sudden, hell became the realm of Satan, a place where the demonic rule. Nonsense. We need to get this right and not be taken in by the fables and wicked inventions of this world. And I would especially caution you, dear readers, to be especially weary of works of art that bend the scriptures. Whether it be fictional stories based on the Bible, or paintings, or even spiritual songs. Remember, when you read a lyric like the one we have in Stuart Townend's hymn, No power of hell, no scheme of man could ever pluck me from his hand. Remember, the only power manifested in hell isn't from Satan or any of his demons. Only God's fury and powerful judgment exists there. I'm not taking shots at the hymn In Christ Alone. There's a way to understand that lyric correctly. No power heading to hell, for example. But as stated before, it's important to get this right and not be caught in a false narrative, not be caught in heresy. One final terrible thought, dear viewers. Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 to 15 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written 
in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. What a fearsome thought that the terrible place capable of tormenting the devil himself for all of eternity is the same place those who die without Christ end up in. Absolutely terrible. And with that, dear viewers, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.